Did you know speeding is the biggest killer on New South Wales roads? The speed that you are travelling does not affect yourself but also others. The faster the car is moving, the higher the chance of a car collision. So, how do we drive safe on the road? Thanks to technology, the safety features of cars have improved a lot over time. It has allowed ideas to enhance the survival rate in accidents. We will be looking at the physics behind car collisions and the consequences that occur. But first, let's look at the safety features of the Holden Commodores from different years. In this period, there's a limited number of knowledge and access to technology. Hence, there are minimal safety features in this old car making this Commodore to be dangerous on the road. This car is made of heavy metal steel and the structure of it will not be able to withstand a crash. This car only features a headrest and seatbelts for safety. Based on the used car safety ratings 2008 by Monash University, they found these cars to provide a worse than average safety protection in an accident. This is a Holden Commodore built in 1995. From this time, it features frontal airbags, seat belts, and anti-lock braking. It is seen that the impacts of car collisions are being further researched and more features are added in cars, such as the introduction of airbags. There is much more protection in this car than others. It is the latest model of Commodore and features airbags in the driver and passenger seats, six airbags, two for the head, four for the front row seats, the sides, and two for the head at the back row seat. It has seatbelts for all seats and pre-tensioners and load limiters for the front row seats. It has ABS brakes and EBD. This car also assists the driver for any blind spots through its sensors, as well as having automatic or automated steering and graphical displays to detect any danger of a collision. Here is an example of a collision, a van and a car. The van weighs approximately 2,000 kilograms and the car 1,500 kilograms. Both will collide towards each other at a velocity of 65 kilometers per hour on opposite directions and collide head on. Objects in the car are loose objects and will continue moving at the travel speed even when the car stops suddenly in a collision. So the crash test dummy would have also suffered severe injuries as it will be pushed forward towards the dashboard because of the force of the sudden stop. We will describe the accident by using Newton's third law of motion to explain this. Every action has an opposite and equal reaction. This gives rise to the fact that all objects have momentum. Unless as an external force acts upon the object, the object will still move at the same pace. It shows the total momentum of a system of interacting objects that are not acted by outside forces is constant. So the mental conserved is as represented by P. This also means the mass and velocity of the initial and final is the same as the mass of two cars times the final velocity. We will find the velocity of the system. Final velocity equals the sum of the initial velocity of the two vehicles divided by the sum of the mass of the two vehicles. So after the collision, the truck and the car moves to the left 19.29 km per hour. Even though they both move at the same speed, the truck still moves the car. Why? Newton's second law. The acceleration of an object is produced when a force acts on a mass. It later creates other equations to show that momentum and mass times its velocity is shown in the equation P equals mv. Momentum is proportional to both mass and velocity. This means a change in one variable will change to another. For example, if you change the velocity, the mass will increase the momentum. But normally, it is velocity that changes, not mass during an action. So the change in velocity is the object accelerating. Therefore, the greater the acceleration, the greater the momentum. In this collision, both move at the same speed, but the mass of the van is heavier than the car, and so it has a higher momentum. So it has a high resistance as opposed to the car which has a low amount. As a result, the van will move the car. If a person was inside the car, the person will suffer greater injuries compared to the person in the truck. On the other hand, if we want to know the time the force acts upon an object, it is called impulse. For example, if you push an object across the floor for a few seconds, the time it takes to stop is very short. However, if you push an object across the floor with the same force as before for a longer time, you've increased the amount of time the force acts. This longer time interval leads to a greater change of momentum. In a collision, the impulse is very short due to the sudden stop, so the moving bodies inside the car will experience much damage as they are pushed forward and do not have much time to react. So the goal of these features is to increase the impulse and extend the amount of time for the occupant to be safe. This is why these safety features during a collision has to activate instantly, and with technology improving it allows a better survival rate. From these facts, if the van or the car's velocity were to be even slightly increased, the collision will be much more tragic as shown by this video. Technology plays a big role in the development of safety features in the car. As shown in the three cars throughout the years, it is shown that new innovations are created for safety of cars. For example, the Holden Commodore in the 1980s were limited in safety features due to the types of technologies available. Compared to the latest models, it has more technical features. Now we'll be looking at three safety devices and see how these features can protect you.
When a driver applies pressure to the brakes, the car will suddenly lock into position resulting in the car to skid on the road due to less friction between the car and the road. This puts the driver at risk as they have no control of the vehicle. When a car features ABS, the sensors detect any brake locker. So when pressure is applied to the brakes, the ABS pulses the brake, allowing better grip on the road, allowing the driver to have better steering control, even in the harsh weather and on different surfaces. With ABS, traction is regained rather than go out of control. Also, with ABS, the braking distance is also significantly shorter and the car to be stable even around curves. There are four parts to ABS. Speed sensors, bulbs, pump and controller. The process starts off with speed sensors which detects the wheel if it's going to lock up into position and are found in each wheel of the car. Later the valves which is the brake line which releases some of the pressure of the brakes that is applied to it. The pumps will then act accordingly to the valve. When pressure is released on the brakes, it brings the pressure up again to slow down the car. As for the controller, it keeps track of the speed sensors and controlling the valves. A study conducted by the Monash University Accident Research Centre found ABS reduced the risk of multiple vehicle crashes by 18% and increased the risk of run road crashes by 35%. This feature is common in cars and reduces the time it takes for the occupant to come to a sudden stop by spreading out the force over the body when the tension of the seatbelt is released. People are 10 times more likely to be good in an accident when not wearing a seatbelt, based on the Road Safety Commission. Without wearing seatbelts, people will be loose objects in the car and can potentially fly out of the seat and have fatal injuries. Compared with a seatbelt on, there's less impact on the person. Today, there are seatbelt reminder systems. It alerts the occupants that when seatbelts aren't being worn, this can reduce the risk of harmful injuries. In regards to safety, it is compulsory for people to put on seatbelts in Australia. Also, modern day seatbelts has pretensioner and force limiter mechanism which both work together to reduce the impact of the stop. The pretensioner restrains the objects during a collision and pulls on the seatbelt to stop the occupant from going out of the seat. There are electrical motion sensors to act on the sudden stop. When this is detected, it activates the pretensioner with a silver ball inside locking the belt. The force limiter controls the load applied to the chest to limit the impact when pushed forward. Airbags are designed to work with seat belts, so during a crash, it further reduces the risk of injury by distributing the force over a greater area, and so it's activated with a crash sensor used to stop the seat belt. They can be located around the car to cushion the impact. In a crash without the airbag, the person is pushed forward, which can lead to severe injuries, especially to the head and spine. The airbag reduces the impact by the body being more controlled during a crash. The airbag allows the driver or front passenger to move forward in a more controlled manner, as the vehicle rapidly reduces speed during a crash. This feature is made of nylon fabric. It is folded into the place areas. The crash sensor, which activates the airbag, detects the action of the collision and it immediately sends a signal to the mechanical switch. The sodium A's died relaxed with the sodium nitrate to produce nitrogen gas which inflates the airbag which comes out of storage instantly. Safety features of cars are important for your safety and your passengers, so stay safe on the roads!